Good morning, good evening, good afternoon to all the participants of this uh, webcast. My name is Janish Kewala. I am Industry Development Manager for Oil and Gas Industry uh, from Endres Hauser headquarters in Switzerland. Uh, we are sorry that uh, we had to postpone the webcast which was planned on Tuesday uh, because our speaker was uh, suddenly going sick and he was not sick with uh, COVID or something, but he had a severe issue with his back. But we have uh, not uh, canceled the web event. We will move it to 24th of September. So most of you would have already got the new um, invitation in your inbox as well. So next slide, please, Volker. So the topic of today, uh, it's about uh, inventory. I'm sure uh, this is this is a hot topic in the industry because uh, it's something which uh, coined a few years back, but um, we have been doing this forever. It looks like that. It was called uh, sensor to boardroom. Uh, you have sensors in the field and the information that you get is in the boardroom, meaning that um, if you have a uh, inventory in your plant you would like to know how much it is and uh, very accurately now the inventory can change in terms of volume so you need it to be corrected as well for the environmental changes and you need connectivity from the sensor going up to the boardroom and these are the topic of today you're going to look at the sensing technology, which is uh, commonly used in inventory monitoring. Uh, Volker, our speaker, is also going to talk about the connectivity topics. Okay. Now, uh, uh, Volker, just go back one slide. Uh, this uh, online seminars are organized by Andres Hauser. Now, if uh, you don't know this uh, picture on the right hand top, uh, this is the headquarter of Andres Hauser and uh, this is in switzerland this is where i actually work and uh, this is a 2.6 billion euro turnover company for 14300 employees and as we speak we have around 8000 plus patents and these patents are the ones which enable us to add value to our offering okay it's a seven, it has 76% equity so we are mostly financing our own r and d efforts Next slide, please. So today's speaker, uh, Volker Schutz, uh, he comes from north of Germany. As you can see, he has been in this industry, I think, forever. Um, he's the dinosaur of our uh, oil and gas offering, actually. I, I would not put him in offering, but he has a lot of knowledge. As you can see, he has a vast experience coming from different regions, so he was uh, located in Thailand, Singapore, and also he has worked on control systems, so he understands the communication protocols quite well. And since uh, 2009, uh, he has moved back to Europe, where his base is now, uh, and uh, he has been a very important part of our strategic industry group for oil and gas, where he brings very good feedback coming from the market as to what the customers need. So, Volker, the stage is yours. I expect you will do the great best thing for the people. Yeah. Thank you, Janish. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Good evening and have a great day. So, it's my pleasure today to talk about tank gauging technology. And every time I'm standing on the tank and discussing with the customer, we really think, okay, which technology should we really use here? What accuracy of the system the customer at will expect? How we make it more easy, reduce the complexity, and yeah, how to run it in, well, run it not for five years, but run it for 20 years and troubleshoot it locally. How can I help my colleagues after that to run it and support it remotely? And yeah, and how will I at the end integrate all this into the current business system in the centralized supply chain solution? 
So today we will take a look at this one. Well, the first thing you have to do is to select the right technology. Now, which technology you select depends on certain topics which we should consider. Now, one of the first questions is always coming, how accurate is your device? And then the question really is, what are you doing with it? Are you doing custody transfer or are you using it for internal inventory? Okay, what product will you measure? Is it reflecting? Is it sticky? What is the viscosity? Is it corrosive? And some other questions which will define what kind of process connection you have and what kind of coating you need to keep care. Yeah, and then when you know the product, typically also know what kind of tank it is stored. Yeah, so there are pretty some standards tanks for depending on the products if you don't change it frequently. And you look at the process connection. This means where can I mount a measurement device? What is the size? How far it's away from the tank shell? Because tanks, when you have a radar, they can reflect it. Is there a stilling well? Is the stilling well straight and not bended? Has it slots? And yeah, then comes the question, do we have to measure pressure? This means we have, for instance, nitrogen blanketing. We have to compensate in LPG tanks and calculate the mass. How high is the temperature or better? More frequently, how low is the temperature if we look at LNG? Do we have a risk of buildup on the devices? This means they get blocked due to condensation or icing. And these are all very nice questions. There are even some more questions what power is available, what preference for the installation have you at in the moment, and yeah, how redundant do you want to set up the system based on cables or interfaces? But at the end, you have to measure firstly correctly and what affects the accuracy and there are international standards available, which you have to or you want to follow to standardize your trading. And here you see two pictures, which is typical because at the end, we will reference our measurement to the manual dipping. Is it either with a level tape or in some countries also the temperature is dipped very frequently. Typically, this is a monthly measurement some customer do this weekly or I even hear the customers is doing it daily, independent if there's a constant measurement on this one. Good. Now, why it's so, so important to compensate for effects? Like if you we talk about tank aging, it's really we are compensating effects on this dot product. Now Assume you have a level uncertainty of two millimeters in this very small tank. Well, it's a typical tank, which we find in the distribution and in the refineries. Then we have an effect already of 1,410 liters or 372 gallons, just to have it also for my colleagues in America, because the standard worldwide is not the same. So everybody has his different calculations. And you can see that an uncertainty of temperature can change the volume within the product pretty dramatically, 0 0.2 degrees, for instance. That is a typical discussion point. 0 0.2 degrees temperature changes could change the volume a lot. Density. If the product density is changing, or when the linearization of the strapping table is not accurate. Nowadays, we do this linearization from level to volume based on the laser calibration in the former days. And still in some countries, it's done with a mechanical tape measurement of linearization. And yes, 
if you see, you need a so-called reference from you, where you will measure to the bottom. This is a gauge reference height. Now, gauge reference height based on the standard can also change. So due to the filling of the tank, it's called the hydrostatic deformation. When you have temperature changes, the tank shell will expand. You could have the datum, the reference plate moving based on the ground movement, roof flexing. Well, you go onto the tank, you open a hatch, and surprise, suddenly the roof goes down a little bit, which you would not have expected because there's vapor inside. Or typically, vapor influences the gases, the degassing of the product within the tank, which you try to prevent today with either nitrogen blanketing or you have an internal floating roof. And when we talk internal floating roof, then you really should look, is this floating roof hanging over the time? In the beginning, for sure not. It's moving up and down. So mechanically, there could be some changes which have influence to the level reading. And so we compensate for this one within the tank gauging system to handle this. The international standard you have available are very commonly known is the OML rules, the API recommendation. There are two based on inventory control or custody transfer. So you see here the accuracy requirement under reference means, means when the device comes from the factory or in the application. The same for temperature measurement. Under references means we deliver the device to you and give you a report how good they are, or in the application. And yes, in the application, 0 0.5 degree could mean quite some volume. Just remember that, or mass. But these are the standard OML R85 2008, which the, defines the design of the devices and the calculation which is used behind. Now, this is about the standard. So let's look how we as Anderson Hauser have done this since long time. Now, in 2001, we came out with our tank gauging radar device technology, and we were the first who put the tank gauging radar device actually on an EXIA concept. This means our radar device here is connected and powered via hard communication on the tank. And then we have temperature probe and pressure devices connected. And we offer a remote display for configuration. And this is our revamped so-called tank site monitor from 2016 when we started to bring out the solution to have also not only an EXIA radar, but also an EXD radar. And we use common electronics components and even common software to standardize here the operation. So let's take a look at our today's devices and their approved ranges for custody transfer on the free space measurement for dome and flat room tanks. We have the Micropilot NMR81. It's an 80 gigahertz technology, accuracy plus minus 0 0.5 millimeters and custody transfer up to 30 meters. And we have the option with EXIA, this means an, the hard communication with a tank side monitor with the 26 gigahertz technology. Now, these are the two devices we're offering today for tank gauging custody transfer with the accuracy there plus minus one. And these devices do comply with OML R85 2008. If it's in a stilling well, we have here the EXD radar six gigahertz technology, 0 0.5 millimeters with custody transfer range. 35 meters and the EXIA solution. 
Now let's, these are the devices. So let's take a closer look behind one of those devices. And we, we will take the spilling well radar because typically 70% of our custody transfer application are based on stilling well because we want to remove the influences of moving products and have a floating roof inside. Now here we brought out in 2016 the EXD radar with a four inch antenna because we need to keep care of our colleagues and neighbors in France where four inch is the standard for the custody transfer radar application. This device and the whole tank caging platform, this means the radar, the tank site monitor, and the server, which you will see later, are designed to IEC 61508 with a four to 20 milliampere output, sill rated with min and max relays. All right, so performance wise, this radar goes up to 35 meters custody transfer today. These are the pressure ratings and the temperature range. And we have there the accuracy statement 0 0.5 millimeters. Now 0 0.5 millimeters to see this is very, very hard. So you really have to measure several times after another when you dip this one and therefore you do an average one. This device connects and measures actually, first of all, it measures directly level and it connects certain devices like average temperature and pressure devices and also does locally and observe density calculation based on pressure devices. For many now is the question, okay, I have measured my level, I have measured a pressure and I have to transmit the data. So how do, can I transmit the data? And here we standardize it for the whole device selection to have a Modbus communication. We also have it in redundant mode. It could be also wireless Modbus. We have a propriety protocol for long distance cable up to six kilometers. So this one is in redundant option. Or people just go four to 20 hard. Of course, we again redundant with the wireless hard option to have this communication or just mix the different principle, a wired and a wireless communication, just to really have diverse functionality. The antenna you can see here is really designed so that the liquid when we have condensation inside the stilling well can, will not influence the measurement. This is our design we're using with our tank gauging radar. So we have just you reuse this again. Good. Now, when we talk about safety, then we really also have to talk about how safe is this device? Typically a tank gauging device is not used as a safety overfill prevention. You're actually supposed to have this independent based on API 2350, IAC standards, and common knowledge, you should not put all your safety into one basket. So you will have uh, not only one device, you will have two. In some countries, we have three devices on the tank because this is a requirement. And there will be not radar only, they have to be diverse. So for instance, a radar, a servo, and a vibration fork. So these are some rules which are given by the countries because of experience and accidents. Now, safe failure fraction of this device, just 98%, just, well, pretty, pretty, pretty good. And when you have a safe design, you also have to proof test. And then you have to look at the coverage. And this proof test coverage for a radar starts with 74% up to 94% depending on how you reference to another device, which you can do. But this is just how good this device and the design of the whole system is done. Now, here's an example of a calibration report, how you get it from our factory with the accuracy statement based on our calibration rig. And this is the MicroPilot NMR81. 
it's an 80 gigahertz technology, free space measurement. So what's so different about this one? It has not anymore a parabolic antenna. Well, with the 80 gigahertz technology, we could reduce the size of the antenna tremendously. And here we have a two inch, three inch or four inch. This is a four inch antenna picture. And we can be very, very close to tank wall, which is reality because you mount these devices. And here's an example from an installation in United Emirates. It's close to the tank wall mounted typically these devices. Why? Because yeah, remember the beginning, you don't want roof flexing. You want a stable environment and this close to the tank wall, the roof is not moving so much. And therefore you have the challenges. When you're close to the wall, first of all, your antenna has to fit inside. You have a certain beam angle. If, if you hit the wall, then your signal will be influenced. And many times when you have a <clears throat> free space measurement, you have heating coils inside and this customer really did have heating coils inside. So they give reflection. And especially when your radar beam angle signal is too wide. And this is what we had at these customers. And therefore we mounted these devices and were able to measure down to the ground up to one centimeter through the heating cords. Before we had a, a FMR 540 installed and we could only measure up to 500 millimeters above the ground. Then the reflection of the heating coils below got too big. So it's really a problem solver. Good. Now, if our devices is connected to the tank side monitor, like this radar here, as an example, the tank side monitor has again, the same fill rating and depending on the connected device also the same proof test or different proof test coverage, but this has to be checked based on which device is connected because here we can connect not only tank gauging radar, also process radars we are connecting with less accuracy and the temperature and pressure devices to make an observed density calculation. And again, as I mentioned before, this is all standardized. So the connection to the next level of the system is very easy. The temperature probe is also since long time connected to our hard communication and <clears throat> we have two options available. The ProTermo NMT 532 and 539. One for custody transfer with a German approval because they have some certain demands to the RTD sensors. And when I mentioned today, there is a tomorrow is not far away. So we thought, okay, how can we make this better? Now we for sure go for long distance. We go for a new sensor with 24 spot sensors, not only 16, with four wire RTD, with a fantastic overall accuracy, overall accuracy of the temperature measurement with a water bottom sensor option. And new to this one is what can we change? Well, we wanted to have stainless steel housing because we're getting more and more requests. Can you not have the whole tank gauging platform in stainless steel? Yeah. So and we will have this device available this year. And very unique, we will make the option available that the 24 sensors can be used to have them in redundancy mode. So have 12 spot sensors on the tank in redundancy mode. So if one sensor failed, the other one could be used as a backup for the measurement. And yeah, this sensor also has the option to go up to six bars. So for some product storage, you will don't need another stilling well to put this temperature set device inside. And there will be some more options. The pressure device, and this is the pressure device we're using today, 
Uh, in October, we also bring out here a new generation of pressure devices. So keep on contact and hear what's going on there. This is what we're using for observed density and for monitoring the nitrogen blanketing. Good, so we really have connected then the measurements and we have as the third option, custody transfer approved, the servo technology. Now our servo is called ProServo and typically we use him in LNG in our PG application where this measurement is not influenced by the vapor influences here. It's also a SIL2 device. And again, it measures and it's compliant to OIML R85 2008. This means it has a pretty good accuracy. It's uh, providing density. New of this device is that it provides up to 50 density points. New when I say before we had 16, until 2016, now we have 50. And the communication of this device again is the standardization. Now, what is so really good about this device, this device has a very high proof test coverage. It starts with 91% for the safety operation. And it goes up to 97%. This is a really, really good device for safety operation. And here's a typical report you get out of the factory in Japan when you order it, where we have our 40 meters calibration tower to handle this. Good, so, so you have two options available, the servo in for application with LPG, with stainless steel housing or with the aluminum cast housing. Good. And if we finish the custody transfer application, we still have the float and tape application available. So at the end, here's our selection guide where you can look what kind of measurement technology can you use. Right, now we are getting pretty relaxed now already, what we can do. So how do I will reduce the system even easier? Then you will, Hopefully remember that in 2008, we brought out our tank vision tank scanner concept where all the custody transfer calculations are within the box and we offer a web browser and we connect our devices here to do this. Well, we not only have our device that's at site, so we have applications where we have to handle the obsolescence and the integration of existing devices. Well, how do we do this? Now, if we took at it and look at it very closely, then we have a converter to convert the protocol, for instance, on BPM or TL2 into to Modbus and bring it into our tank scanner communication. Or well, our devices can be integrated into our friends' applications with this gauge emulator. And yes, if we have a integration of the whole network, we also have the panel mounted unit available to handle this communication. And very unique with this one is that we allow to use still the old configuration tools from the devices to handle this communication. Good. <clears throat> so we have different boxes there for centralized operation. Typically in this one, we have up to 90 tanks available to block, put it up in different boxes. And we have different interfaces for bigger size up to 60 networks. Now, many of you still say, yeah, web brace is very nice, but I want to do PC-based operation. So yeah, we have a PC-based operation software for tank farm management, movement operation, we have a redundant interface and we have redundant server client concept available. So we are <clears throat> really fully equipped for the tank gauging application. And <clears throat> we offer, as I mentioned before, the redundant concept for this communication. But 
<clears throat> many times people say, yes, very nice for greenfield, but also how to maintain it later. Well, you can always configure and see the data, everything locally at devices and have all this information very nicely available at the device. But yes, remotely from the control room, we have the connection to the devices via our field care solution so that you can configure the device if you want to change something, use, use gauge operation, see the diagnostic, do the SIL proof testing, and troubleshoot if something goes on. Uh, and we today we offer the field expert also as a tool to have this on a Wi-Fi or Bluetooth solution in different zone, in zone in a safe area, zone two and one. And this really makes this solution ready for Natalian, including our smart support remotely that you can get into contact with our team for the servicing. So that was really the basic tank gauging solution with device configuration. But at the end, we have to bring this information into the supply chain solution if we have several sites. So we offer software to integrate this data bidirectional into your business system, or we even offer a supply chain software where we have it installed on your premise or in the cloud. Now, this will be too much to show you this functionality today. Therefore, we are also showing you very soon how we get a grip onto this tank and in the plants. Therefore, we sh will show you how our new IoT radar will do this one, how you easily can mount it. It's also an 80 gigahertz radar. It's battery powered integrated and it's a non-invasive measurement. So you just put it onto the tank when you can measure through or have a process connection. The next online seminar is on the 20th of October here. And one application which we didn't talk today is really also LNG application. The tank vision software professional also has the option of LNG application and please register for our online seminar LNG on the 17th of September. And with this, I really would like to thank you guys for your attention and for sure you have lots of questions because I have just been able to show you a little bit where we are, what we can do. And we only talked about tank gauging and the centralized operation. We didn't talk about terminal loading operation, steam metering, and all these functionalities. Anderson Hauser offers much more. So I would like to close my presentation and waiting for Janish and you to ask your questions. So please feel free to ask the questions. And thank you very much for your time of listening. Janish? Thanks, Volker. Uh, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, I'm sure then people also can hear me. Well, the questions are trickling in. And uh, as you mentioned, uh, we, we uh, promote that uh, you should ask your questions in the question area of uh, go to webinar tool it's it's one of the menu items so just look for it and then you can start typing your questions we already have a few questions for you Volker um, uh, the one comes from Ali and uh, it is around do you have battery powered LoRa van compatible level indicators the battery powered LoRa van will be this IoT radar. This is uh, planned for end of the year. Today, this is going via LTE communication, NB IoT communication, not LoRaWAN. We focused first on the 
open networks here, which is available in many countries. LoRaWAN is a pretty application for communication where you have a dedicated network locally available from the supplier to make this. Um, but this will come end of the year. Okay. Uh, thanks, uh, Volker. Uh, the next one is uh, coming from Zubair. Uh, it is, uh, can we access temperature transmitter via controlled room, via field care in the latest NMR81 series? Yes, when you have updated the software here inside the device, with the, to the latest software version, you can route through this device to here. This was a functionality which we had with a tank side monitor available before, and now this has been added to the software of the whole tank gauging platform. So yes, you can do it now when you upgrade the software of that device, when you're allowed to do it. Some countries, you're not allowed to change the software when the devices have been locked by the authorities. So yeah, it's possible. Good, uh, I think it's very clear. Uh, perfect, thanks for bringing up the slide as well. Um, the next question comes from Son. Um, Emerson can use radar technology for, for their offer to LNG terminal. Can, we give, can you give me some advantage of servo to convince customer to choose us? Actually, yes, the servo advantage is that uh, we are not influenced by the vapor phase of the LNG, but also our radar devices are used as a secondary device because we do diverse technology there on LNG storage. So we have several sites where we use our radar on LNG storage there with servo radar in parallel and in lng we actually have three devices on the tank so it's not an issue to have the diverse technology there so the main thing is the accuracy and the vapor influences and that that's the reason why people use servo technology and the high safety and proof test coverage of a servo which you can't achieve with a radar there 97% proof test coverage with the radar is not really achievable in this application. Yeah? We go up to 93% with our radar. So there, are, these are tiny details in the design and proof test coverage. And this depends on how long a LNG tank will operate, what is the best to, to select there. Many specification and tenders will call today for servo and radar technology because they want the diversity of the measurement principle. Hope that will clarify your question. Good. Uh, but you yeah. can join the webinar, please. There we will have more of this information available for you. Yeah. The next question comes from Nobelson uh, Asuala. Is the integration of other OEMs for every model or specifically for the ones listed in the slide? So the integration slide, yeah, slide 29. Yeah, 29. I have not listed all the models there. Sorry, there is not enough space. We even have some other protocols supported. Um, please check with us and send us which devices you want to integrate. Mostly these devices, yes, it's very simple. Some only provide level, some provide level and temperature, some provide level temperature and pressure readings. We have a solution to handle that one, yes. So please send us your devices and the protocol which is used, and we, we can tell you what is possible to reuse and develop with you a migration path for keeping and your system up to date. Uh, the next one comes from Partha. Um, will NMT81 replace the NMT539? Um, and also, is the NMT going to be manufactured at Endershauser level and pressure? The NMT 
81 will at the end be the new generation and will replace the NMT539 because it has more functionality, more options with the same price, hopefully, and yeah, and higher functionality. Yes, it will replace it and it's still built in Japan. And it has to be built in Japan because this is our competence for tank gauging temperature. And the Anderson Hauser level pressure Japan belongs to the Anderson Hauser group. So this is built there. Same like our okay. servo is built in Japan. Mm -hmm. And I really like if you would come there and see our production, it's a close to Mount Fuji. So you can see from our production in Mount Fuji and see how we produce those devices there designed Thanks. for this industry. Good. Uh, the next question comes from Narsema. Uh, could we have a special session just focusing on gauge emulator and gauge link? So these are the integration uh, topics for the different protocols to integrate our devices into, uh, let's say, competitive systems and things like that, and the reverse way as well. Um, yes, we have an internal service training, how we teach the people how mm -hmm. this device is really working. We also, mm -hmm. but actually it is a pretty, pretty simple device. It's so easy to connect it. It's uh, because the good thing is not everything is constantly changing on these protocols. So it's also working with the old connections here, also with the new one. Yeah, we have a training on this available from our service team. If people really want to see this one, otherwise the manual is very, very easy. And even me uh, can connect it up to the other systems. So yeah, this is available within our service masterclass training. And so we have the competence to manage this and also train uh, our colleagues and customers on this topic. Uh, here. Yes, for sure. We offer that product. We even provide in like my German colleagues provide service for Honeywell products to the customer. Mm -hmm. So they have the verification, the approval by those uh, that they can handle the service for Honeywell products. Well, some of our colleagues are also from Amazon, so they can really handle this one to maintain it. So Volker, now we go into rapid fire round because we have only two minutes left and still a few more questions coming in. Um, NMT539, uh, is it able to directly communicate to RSG45? NMT, the, do, 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 just a moment. Let me get the slide again. The NMT539, you said, right? Mm-hmm. Yep. Um, I cannot change the slide. This is interesting now. Ah, the NMT539 needs, first of all, no, it cannot talk directly via heart to the RSG45, the mimeograph, because we need the level reading to make the correct average temperature reading. And mm -hmm. via the heart communication, this has been not implemented into the mimeograph. This functionality is inside the tank site monitor to send the product level and the water level when present to the ProTermo so that he does the right level correction because you don't want to calculate the oil water temperature. You want the oil temperature for your volume to mass calculation. So no, unless you send change the software on the mimeograph to send this command, you could not do it directly. You have to go by the tank site monitor or the tank gauging platform. And then you can read it in. And then you can also read all the 16 spot temperature via Modbus in, for instance. Like we do this on many, many sites in the world. OK. Um, the next uh, two questions come from Namir. Uh, the one is related to density calculations. 
what is the alternative uh, to the cell bar, which is shown in the diagram on one of the slides? The alternative to instead of using the server to calculate the density is to have a pressure device below and have a level device on the top and do the, the observed density calculation within the tank gauging device here, observed mm -hmm. density. And then we calculate this back to the standard density and have this correction in the calculation. The other option is to use a density device and bring it into the system. This could be, for instance, a liquid fund with density measurement or a mass flow meter or a specific density meter. But this is then just the spot density of that product. And you bring it into the calculation or have just the lab density used for this observed, for this calculation. So there are many different options. First of all, you need to have the process connections for that one. Yeah. Um, so when you mention the crude oil, uh, what is this product type you try to mention? Maybe it's about, uh, is it WTI, Brent, Blend, or OPEC basket or something? But I think it covers all of it, right? Can you repeat this one? Uh, the product type is crude oil. Yeah. For the for the daily calculation. Um, okay, if you crude oil, if I understand, can you tell me the slide what, to which this question is? Uh, the the 19th slide. So you mentioned that uh, you have the server for density me measurement. Yeah. What is the alternative when the product type is crude oil? Um, alternative, if yeah, in crude oil you would use the hydrostatic density measurement, so the observed density measurement there with pressure. The crude oil, depending on the viscosity of the crude oil, we use the servo for this application yeah, because some crude oil is pretty, pretty sticky and viscous. And if it's not heated, it's not moving easily, then you would move away from this one. But also that brings challenges to the pressure device if the crude oil got stuck onto the sensor. So mm -hmm. yeah, you could use a liquid fund and there's a must mention a mass flow meter to really verify this one and keep it for some time or lab analysis. Yeah. Now uh, we are running out of time, but I will just take last two questions. Uh, so we answer them quickly. Uh, on slide number 29, as tank gauging software will share information to DCS, is it yeah. possible to synchronize the time between DCS and Endroshauser tank gauging software? Yes, it's uh, synchronized with the, DC, with the DCS, uh, either via an NTC server or with the Windows functionality. So this is a standard functionality that you synchronize the time between the DCS and the software. Okay. okay. Good. Um, the last question for today. Uh, so uh, actually you can have a shy of relief after that. Do we plan to have a 24 volt uh, DC power supply for NMR81? Uh, yes, in October we will release this 24 volt power supply. Excellent. It's just uh, waiting for the approvals, the hardware, everything is ready. We need the approvals in the authorities in the moment. And you know October the situation. 2020, right? This year, 2020, October, mm -hmm. we will release it. We're just waiting that the documents, the approvals are all in place. Yep. Hardware, everything is ready. Excellent. Volker, thanks a lot uh, for answering, for staying back for all the questions. And uh, you did uh, quite well with the time as well. I yeah. thank you uh, all for participating and still sticking around uh, till all the questions were answered. Last few words from you, Volker. Yes, please get a little bit relaxed, look at the solution and Talk to your local colleagues and, and the salespeople from Anderson Hauser to select the right technology and we develop with you the migration or your solution for the future. 
and when functionality is not there or how you think it should work, talk to us. We are enhancing the software frequently to fit to the requirement of our customers. And thank you very much for your time. Please all keep safe and see you soon somewhere online in the video chat in uh, hopefully soon also in person, but we will see how that works out. Thank you very much for listening. So just uh, one housekeeping topic. Uh, there's a handout available in the handout uh, menu of the GoToWebinar. Make sure you download this. Uh, it covers most of the topics which uh, Holker mentioned. And if you still have questions, feel free to just uh, mail it in uh, so that uh, we will bring in uh, Holker to uh, answer those. Or maybe uh, if there are any other topics, we can organize uh, uh, another web meeting with you individually. Thank you and stay safe and see you again next week with another topic. Uh, uh, just check interest.com page uh, so that you know which other webinars or online seminars are being conducted by Andres Hauser. Maybe there is other interesting topic which is coming up, uh, one of which uh, Fulker mentioned is related to gas uh, tank gauging system as well. So keep tuned into endress.com webpage. Thank you and have a good day.